The first signs of uh, thripsins in infestations are usually lip stipling, stippling, which are uh, small, pale marks caused by the rasping of the feeding of the of the thrips on the young tissues. That's that's kind of the first sign that shows on plants. Of course, if you have sticky cards, sticky traps, you may notice them uh, being active there as well. But, uh, you know, as the population grows, uh, thrips feeding can stun the plant, can cause discoloration of the, of the shoots. Uh, the leaves may become papery and distorted. Um, and, uh, you know, the terminals rolled or deformed. So you really got to watch for the stippling signs early on on the crop. Many growers do not use a rigorous monitoring program, a uh, protocol, a sampling protocol to detect the very small populations. And, and that's, that's a challenge because they are hard to find. Uh, they are very tiny. Uh, and, and then the eggs are inside the, the plant tissue. So early on, the, the plant can look clean. But if they are not really looking for the small nymphs, then it, it might escape them. As soon as uh, the growers have the new crop that is that is known to be susceptible, they they should start looking for. Some growers use preventive measures like sprays or even uh, uh, seedling dips because they know or they assume that there might be some some eggs already in the plants, even though they're not showing. So I would say uh, the most common challenge is not having a rigorous enough sampling protocol. Strict pest monitoring programs uh, uh, are really the basis for an integrated approach, which is really necessary for thrips, based on the life cycle and based on, on, on how damaged they can be. It's, it's, uh, it's really important to avoid growing a new crop right next to one that has already a thrips infestation. So that's, you know, that's easier said than done because sometimes we don't have the space in the greenhouse. But, but it's, it would be a, a, a very good assumption that if you're growing a new crop next to an old crop that already has some or is susceptible to thrips, then it will, they will move into new crops. So avoiding uh, those, those uh, next to one another uh, uh, is, is a really good thing. Growers should start really their programs, either preventative or curative, as early as possible and even before the flowers. Some growers uh, don't even check for thrips until there's flowers, and, and by that time, it may be too late. Thrips control with uh, insecticides does require spray applications, uh, uh, with, whether they are contact insecticides, whether they're microbiological insecticides, whether they're systemic insecticides. It requires spray applications for best coverage. So the best possible coverage you can get, the better thrips control will be. Drench applications to the soil really have limited uh, uh, activity, li limited effectiveness on things that feed by rasping on the plant tissue, which includes the western flower thrips, thrips in general, but also the spider mites. I want to emphasize that the strict monitoring program is really one of the best uh, management approaches. Rotating insecticides, when you do have a program, uh, insecticides that are effective on thrips and, and getting the best coverage possible um, are, are key for management of thrips. One of our new tools against uh, thrips is Pradia insecticide. Pradia is a combination of two active ingredients, cyclililiprol and flonicamid. And what we've found is that the, the combination is really effective because both uh, uh, components work against thrips. The flunicamid part is systemic, so it diffuses through the plant tissue, and the cyclonilipril part is contact and ingestion activity. We found that the, the combination has, has, has produced great results against flower thrips. This uh, product can also be fogged or, or used in a fine mist, which may improve the, the, the coverage. Again, Pradia is a combination insecticide and has been found very effective. We've had really great feedback from growers. If a grower is, is, is having uh, uh, 
issues with thrips, you got to remember that the life cycle of the thrips is completed in the soil, whether it's the, the, the potting media soil or the soil underneath the benches in the greenhouse. So that's why an integrated approach is really important. Uh, if you have surviving insects from one crop to the next, from one generation to generation, that population is it's just going to eventually explode when the resources, when the weather is there. So it's it really important to integrate sanitation practices that, that avoid survival and reproduction of the thrips. And again, do not assume that because there's no flowers, there's no thrips. You really have to look for thrips uh, as early as possible. If you detect plants with infestation, try to isolate them, separate them, and because that in itself lowers the density of the thrips, but it will also increase the effectiveness of any spray program. <music>